My son, Gary Hopkins Jr., was murdered by the police in Prince George's County. And I know for this mother how important it is to have support. And I stand here today representing not only my son, but uh, the organization, several organizations, the Coalition of Concerned Mothers, which unfortunately is comprised of mothers that have lost their children to community violence and at the hands of law enforcement. I'm also representing an organization, Families United for Justice, Justice, which is a national organization of families. And there's so many of us across this country, unfortunately, and every 23 hours or less, another family joins this, this organization, this sorority, that no one pledged to be a part of. So I know, sister, how difficult this is. I want to say that 20 years ago, there was no justice for my family. There was no transparency. There was no accountability. And here we stand today, one year after Marquise has lost his, his life, still no transparency and no accountability. You shoot no one in the back the way Marquise was shot and think that that is justice. We stand here and we demand, we're not asking, but we're demanding that they reveal the video. This mother and this family needs to know what happened to their loved one. Although that will bring no solace to your grief, because grief is an emotional roller coaster. It's something that you will live with for the rest of your life. It's very difficult when you birth a child and they're tragically, tragically and suddenly taken away from you. You want to know. So I want you to know, sister, that we stand with you, that there's a family of you, there's a sorority of us across this, across this nation, not just here in Washington, D.C., in the DMV area that understand and feel what you're going through. And we are here to support you in any way that we can. And again, we demand that they release the video. This mother needs to know, this brother needs to know, this family needs to know, so they can determine what their next steps are. But I stand with you. My name is Sean Blackman, and I'm an organizer with Stop Police Terror Project DC. And I'd like to begin by thanking Miss Alston, the family, and this community for having us here today to continue to raise the cry for justice for Marquise Alston and transparency and accountability for those who are responsible. What has happened to Marquise Austin is criminal. What has happened to this community and to this family that loved him is criminal. And what's even worse is that those who are in power, who are supposedly in position to protect us, to keep us safe, and to make things right when they go wrong, have been oddly absent and silent on this issue. Police Chief Peter Newsham claims, having seen the footage that none of us have seen, that there's overwhelming evidence that the shooting of Marquise was justified by police. That was the word he used, overwhelming. And you would think that if that was the case, that if there was evidence that the police were justified, that they would release this to the public, or at least to the family, for us to see and for all to see. But this is the same police chief who's overseeing a department that has detained children, a nine-year-old, a 10-year-old, a group of young boys, minding their business, this is the same police chief who, in the same breath, denies that Washington, D.C. police engages in stop and frisk tactics, and then a moment later, basically admits that that is precisely what they do. So we know that police chief Peter Newsham is a liar, and that the truth is not in him. And we know that this abuse this mistreatment, this complete disregard for life is being facilitated and allowed 
by Mayor Muriel Bowser. And so we are here today to call for the release of that body camera footage so that we can all see the truth of what happened to Marquise. And for there to be some people held responsible because the list of incidents of racist police terror in DC, it keeps growing. Daquan Young, Terrence Sterling, the list goes on and on and on. And so since we know for a fact that we have no help coming from elected officials and those who are supposed to be handling this and the folks who are supposed to be helping to uh, create a condition of public safety, we know that justice can only come from what we're doing right here, right now. Fueled by love, fueled by fire, and fueled by the need to see justice done. So we are more than glad to be able to help in that effort to bring some peace and to bring some closure and to reveal the reality of what has happened to Marquise Austin and what has happened so far too many here in the city of Washington. When police are shooting people to death, then we're not really talking about gun violence without that. Last year, today, I was just telling folks today, uh, we all realized that this week, um, this was the third uh, police murder in six weeks last summer by MPD. And the problem is that people don't uplift the names in D.C. They don't tell the stories and they don't demand justice, right? We tend to forget or we don't hear about it. So last year, when we were at um, the scene shortly after, before Police Newsham got there, there's a, a lot of us here that were there, the thing we told him, and it was very important for us to look him in the eye and say, we'll be back. And we will demand these body cameras. It's important to remember also that MPD continues to say that these are isolated incidents. Mm -hmm. These are not isolated incidents. These are incidents that are happening because of a system of brutalizing, targeting, and killing black people in DC. All of the people murdered by MPD have all been black. Mm -hmm. The using the using the language that that person shot or had a gun, always in 7th District and 6th District. If you just look in the paper. The other thing we did, which I think is really important, is to understand that this is a system and a cycle of which they take a victim and, point and take them in the worst light. We did a minute by minute, we on purpose stayed from the time the first news got there until everybody left. And we did a timeline of the statements that every police, uh, public statement that the police officers gave the media in that day and three days afterwards. It progressed about who he was, about what happened, that contradicted from hour to hour. They do this because they've been allowed to. They do this because we have been silenced here. Uh, but I also wanted to point out that uh, there are folks here that continue to support and will continue to support the family um, because of, especially that week, we have Jay, um, who is the uncle of um, Jeff Price, who was uh, the first of the three last year um, in the six weeks. Um, and to let you know that we have the power to stop this by continuing to say their name. And that after all the news goes away and, and the lawyers and the vigils, we have a duty to continue to support the family. That looks like calling, checking in, no? But well, calling, checking in. That means, hey, you wanna go to a movie? Do you need dishes done? Do you need the, cha the cha trash taken out? The loss in, of any kind is difficult. But we as a community have a duty to love and protect one another. 
Um, so I, again, I want to I wanna thank you. I want to encourage everybody to continue to get the real story out yeah. about who Marquise was, about what didn't happen that day. And we will be launching a social media campaign and having folks call in. We did it last year. We'll do it again. It's how we got the video for Terrence Thurley. Yeah. Um, so follow us on um, online and we will demand that this